Hello and welcome to another Beer and Code. This one's going to be halfway between a vlog and an actual Beer and Code. Uh, I won't be doing any live coding, but I have this really cool thing I want to show you. And I wanted to talk to you about something cool that happened. Uh, first of all, the cool thing that happened. I have 100 subscribers! Um, that is all thanks to you guys. I really, really appreciate your support in just watching my videos, commenting, leaving suggestions, liking it even, uh, disliking it even. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, but 100 subscribers is ridiculous. I know it's not a lot compared to any of the big YouTubers out there, but that's okay. Like, I just started this a couple months ago, and I'm new to it, and I am... Very proud that you guys, or uh, flattered that you guys want to watch my video. So, uh, 100, 100 subscribers, fantastic milestone. Thank you so much, and cheers. Mm, that reminds me. Today I'm drinking something kind of odd. It's called Blacker. Sorry about the glare, I gotta fix that. It's called B-L-A-K-K-R, Blacker. Uh, it's an Imperial Black Ale. Uh, and it is really good. I'm sort of sending out the winter with this one. And it is by three brewers. It's uh, Three Floyds, Surly, and Real Ale. They uh, collaborated to make this deliciously um, hoppy and dark beer. Anyway, on to the next cool thing uh, I wanted to talk about is a little thing I found on Code Golf, which if you've heard of Stack Overflow... Code Golf is like a, uh, a, well, it's a Stack Overflow for Code Golf. If you don't know what that is, it's it's Code Golf and, and programming puzzles. Uh, so this is a programming puzzle that I found on Reddit, I think, and I thought it was really cool. The idea is you have to write code that will, excuse me, beer? You have to write code that will create an image that includes all of the RGB colors that exist. So uh, they give an example here in their 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 question or their challenge, and then some of the responses and like the images that people created were very cool, and it inspired me to write my own code. Well, so let me show you an example. This is the guy that won. Uh, it's really cool. This is what really inspired me. This is actually done in C sharp. Uh, so this is something that he did programmatically, and so the thing is, each pixel is a different RGB color, and every single RGB color is used. So that's really cool. Um, there's different sizes, different versions. Look at that. Those are fantastic. So this really inspired me to do my own, and that's what I'll be showing you. Um, so let's first run it and show you what happens. I'm just going to click Run. Takes about six seconds ish. Boom! All right, it's done. And now let's pop that up. Boom! So that's what my version currently creates. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. Uh, it's not as cool as some of the other ones, but it was really fun to be able to create that. Um, I'm going to run it one more time after setting a, a little different setting in here and show you what else it can do by just changing. Little teeny values here and there. Uh, it's It's been really cool to tweak. I'll probably speed this up using YouTube Magic. <sighs> Boom. Done. All right. So as you can see, by just changing this threshold value, which I'll talk about in a little bit, the, the colors seem to be more run together, and you have this weird artifacting uh, that, that kind of shows up uh, right in this area, and like, how does that happen? I don't know. It just produces some incredibly cool things. So I want to show you how I did that and uh, talk about it a little bit. So first... Let's look at the code. There's a, there's a very simple runner here that just creates a new image creator uh, with a config and then does save image. That's very straightforward. And then we have this 
image creator. So like I said, you pass in this config, and the config can change the image from being uh, one size to a bigger size to really big size to a size that blows up my computer and I haven't been able to get to work yet. So, um, But that's, that's all it does. The, the config changes the size of the image. And here's the meat of the code. So first, uh, what I, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm just placing pixels on this image, and, and you'll see how I do it here. So first, I create a, sort of a placeholder for the pixels to go, so I don't I don't stick them all in the image right away. I decide where to put them first, and then once I decide where to put them all, I then put them on the image. So here I am creating a pixel array uh, that is the same size as the image is going to be. Then I generate all of the colors, which I will show you how I do that. Uh, I loop through all of the red values, I loop through all of the green values, and I loop through all of the blue values, and I just create a color for each one of those. So that's how I get all of the colors. And then I do this thing where I order it by a new GUID. And what that essentially does, or what that exactly does, is it randomizes the list of pixels. So that way every time I run it, I get at least a slightly different result. All right, so what this is doing is it's looping through all of the pixels in the image to place them all. And how it's doing it is, say this is the image, it starts in the top corner and it stripes. So it runs down and sets each pixel in this diagonal fashion. And that is what that's doing. So for each of those pixels, what I do is I have this method called get and remove close color. And what that does is it takes in a color to compare. So I need a color to compare it to, and it'll find a color in my list of all colors that's close to it. So I simply loop through the list. I compare the two colors. And if my diff is below this threshold, so the compare, this diff here returns a number. If it's small enough, which means if the color is close enough, I set that as a result, I remove it from the list, and I return it. And then I, once I return it, I go back up to here, and I stick it into my pixel array. So that means I've placed another color. Uh, one thing here, in order to determine what color to match it with, I have a method called pick near color. And that takes in the current position I'm trying to set, and all of the pixels. And all it does is it takes, so there's a, it's trying to place this pixel here. It grabs the pixel before it to the left and the pixel right above it, those two, and it averages them to try to find the next pixel. So it's pretty straightforward too. It's, uh, this all kind of took me a little while to wrap my head around, but once you start looking at it, it all kind of uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, so all I'm doing is looping through all the pixels, and then based on proximity, finding another color in my list that I haven't used yet, and setting the pixel in. And then all I do is once I've calculated all the pixels, I create a new image, a new bitmap, and then I loop through all of the pixels and just call set pixel. And then I save the image. Um, so it's more or less straightforward looping through the image in the diagonal fashion, picking the next pixel based on the pixel above it and the pixel to the left, left of it and averaging them and finding a close pixel in the list and putting it in the right place. So if you guys found this really cool, like I did, it'd be so cool if I could see something that you guys did with this. Either if you take my code from the GitHub link below or you build it completely from scratch. It'd be really cool to see something that you guys built and some images that you created. Uh, it's really fun to do, it's really rewarding, it's a lot of fun to, to tweak all the images, so uh, it'd be really cool to, to see what you guys can do. Anyway, um, this is supposed to be really quick and I think it's gone on kind of long, but <laughs> thank you for tuning in and thank you so much for subscribing. 100 su subscribers is wonderful. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Um, Please like and subscribe if you liked it and like to see more of these kinds of things. Uh, once again, cheers and thank you so much for tuning in.